Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are studying the features of the meta language of Panini in which we noted three additional important features other than those of the object language in the meta language of Panini. The first one was the meaning of a word and what is main and what is subordinate. The second one was the meaning of the cases and the third one was the technique of Pratyahara. In forming the Pratyahara, we also looked at the concept of a marker or an it. In this lecture, we are going to take one step forward in studying this concept of a marker because quite a lot depends on the understanding of the way Panini has used markers in the meta language of his grammar. So, we will study the markers in the meta language of Paninian grammar in detail now. So, first question is what is a marker? A marker is a verbal element that is adjoined to another verbal element and the sole purpose of this adjoinment is only to bring out certain grammatical operation. The most important part of this marker is that it is not a part of that element to which it is adjoined in the object language. Even though it may seem to be a part of that adjoining element in the meta language. That is the most important feature of a marker. A marker is also known in Paninian meta language as it and we are going to take examples. In fact, we are going to study in detail what an it is or what a marker is wherein it will be clear how it becomes a part of an element in the meta language but is not a part of that element in the object language. Let us proceed further. So, this marker is known as it in Paninian meta language. The literal meaning of the word it is one which goes away derived from the verbal root e to go. So, where does it go away? So, it comes to the meaning that it is the one which is not part of the object language. It appears right at the outset as a metalinguistic element and triggers certain grammatical operations and then goes away leaving behind its mark. It is used only in the Ashtadhyayi, in the meta language of Paninian grammar. We shall study more about this in a while. But let us look at one more term that is used for a marker in the Paninian grammatical tradition that is Anubandha. The literal meaning of Anubandha is one which is attached with another element. This term however, we must note that this term is not used explicitly in the Ashtadhyayi. What is used is it. It. What is the general idea of a marker or 
an it when said it goes away or is attached to an element. So, the general idea is the following an it is attached to a verbal element be it list of nominal roots or list of verbal roots or list of suffixes or list of augments and it is attached to any of these elements and a rule is created with reference to that it attached to any of these elements in which a particular operation is stated with reference to that it sound. This is the general idea the way a marker or an it sound functions. This is what it brings about. This is a part of grammatical derivation. So, in the process of grammatical deriv derivation, a verbal element containing an it in it is a given as the starting point of the grammatical derivation process. The first grammatical operation that happens on that element is identification of an it within it. Then after an it is identified, it is deleted. So, its deletion is the next part of the grammatical derivational process. So, identification and deletion of an it sound are the beginning of the grammatical derivation process and they do not require any condition or any environment for them to apply. That is why they are called in Sanskrit a naimittika, a naimittika. So, let us come back to the question what is it? Let us study how this term is defined by Panini and where has he defined it? Panini has defined the term it in 1.3.2 to 1.3.8. This is a small section that appears at the beginning of the third pada, which is actually the beginning of the study of the meta language. I must add a point here that this is how the Paninian grammar is taught in a particular method that I have been teaching with. Once this topic is clear as to what is an it, I have observed that many students find their own ground in understanding the Paninian grammar better. Therefore, it is extremely important to study this section right at the beginning. It is also to be noted that in addition to 1.3.2 to 8, there is another sutra 1.3.9 Tasya Lopaha and this sutra states the deletion of it. What happens to the it after you identify an it using these sutras 1.3.2 to 8? What happens to it? So, 1.3.9 tells us that such an identified sound gets deleted tasya lopa and we shall study this further later on. In studying these sutras and this small section, we will also study a particular method of making the meaning of a sutra in the Ashtadhyayi. So, we will follow certain method. This method involves the following steps. First of all, we ask a question namely 
what are the exact words used in the sutra? First of all, let us figure out the exact words because in the sutra, there are words uttered with close proximity result in resulting in euphonic combinations. So, first of all, we need to dissolve all those combinations and get the exact word that is used in the sutra so as to remove any ambiguity that is possible. Then the next question we ask is, this is the next step, what are the cases which are parts of the words that are figured, that are used? After we assign the cases, after we identify the cases used, then we go find out the meaning of these cases. So the question we ask is, what is the meaning of these cases? After we are done with this, then we go to the next step by asking the next question namely, are there any words which are continued from previous sutra or sutras in this sutra to complete the sentence in this particular sutra? Then we find that out and several times the commentators help us, sometimes the tradition helps us tradition of teachers. After we are done with this, we look at the next question, are there meta rules which apply in this sutra? And then we find that out and if there are any meta rule rules that apply in this particular sutra, we do apply them. And the answers to all these questions put together they give us a certain methodology to make the meaning of one particular sutra. And we shall see how this happens when we study this section, small section of it saudhnya, the term it which we used earlier in forming the pratyahara. And there in brief we used 1.3.3 which said that the final consonant is termed as it. In all the 14 sutras, the final consonant is termed as it. This is what we have studied earlier in brief. Let us study this in detail hereafter. So let us take the first sutra in this section, 1.3.2. What is the sutra? The sutra is Upadeshe Jananasika it. Let us go step by step as noted down earlier. The first step is to identify the exact words in the sutra by removing the euphonic combinations. So we will have the following. There are four words in this sutra. They are Upadeshe, Ach, Anunasikaha, and it. This is what these exact words are. Then we go to the next step namely identify the cases these words have. So Upadeshe is 7th case 7 slash 1, Ach is in the first case 1 slash 1, Anunasikaha again in the first case 1 slash 1 and it once again the first case that is 1 slash 1. So we note that there are 3 words appearing in the first case and the, even the number 1 slash 1. So the cases of all these 3 words match that is good enough a reason to think of a possible relation between them and we shall see how it develops. Upadeshe needs to be studied closely because in this case the seventh case does not mean what we have seen before, immediately before, no. That is why we said that those meanings in the meta language they are additional in addition to the meanings that are available in the object language. Here in Upadeshe 
the seventh case means the same thing as it would mean in the object language namely in or on. So, Upadesha means in the Upadesha, in the Upadesha. Ach, we have already seen what Ach stands for and the answer is a vowel or any vowel. So, Ach stands for vowels. And then finally, Anunasikaha. Anunasika is a technical term defined by Panini in 1.1.8. In general, we can translate anunasika by the word nasal and of course, it is the technical term that is defined. So, the other words define the term it and it is the technical term over here. So, the term it gets defined by these three words upadeshe, anunasikaha and ach. So, we say that Upadeshe means in the Upadesha. This meaning of the seventh case is found in the object language. This instance is not to be interpreted as per the meta rule explained earlier. This does not mean immediately before the Upadesha. No, it means in the Upadesha as is the case in the object language. So, the next question is what is an Upadesha? An Upadesha is explained as adya ucharanam, adya ucharanam, adya is initial, ucharana is enunciation. So, adya ucharanam is initial enunciation. So, upadesha is initial enunciation of elements for the purpose of deriving the sentences of Sanskrit. What it means is placing the basic material required for the beginning of the grammatical derivation process on table. All this includes lexicon which is tagged and we shall see how it gets tagged more specifically about the term it and so on and grammar rules. That is what is part of the upadesha, the lexicon as well as grammar rules. What it does not include is the following, Upadesha does not include the substitute that replaces the substituent after the application of the grammatical rule. This is not Upadesha. Upadesha is the stage where all the elements are placed side by side before you actually begin the grammatical process and in Paninian grammar the grammatical process is in the form of in many cases substitution. X is substituted by Y. We have seen this example and this kind of explanation before. Here is a concrete example. So, in the list of verbal roots you find chi as mentioned here. And in the list of suffixes you find yat. So, now you can say that they are part of the original or initial enunciation. Now, by applying a rule, chi becomes che and yat becomes ya. Now, this stage is the stage of substitution. So, che is a substitute, ya can be called a substitute, but let us keep ya aside. Let us focus on che right now. Che can be a substitute and che will not be or is not part of the initial enunciation. This is the substitution. So, for example, we begin the process by looking at the meaning to collect and then in order to express this meaning, we look at the verbal roots. This is the most suitable candidate. We pick it up and we bring it to the table, we start the derivation process now. So, after this chi we add the suffix yat and then after this yat gets added, the t at the end gets the it sabhnya by the application of 133 and then this t 
gets deleted and then we go to the next step where chi becomes j and here remains as it is and then finally you will get the form chaya. In this form chaya the starting point is chi and then yat which is added. So, this is the initial enunciation stage chi plus yat the rest is the substitution where elements get substituted one by another. This is what is Upadesha. Now let us come back to the other words and their meanings in the Sutra. Ach, Anunasika and It. We have seen what Ach means. We have seen what Anunasika means. Ach is a vowel. Anunasika is a nasal vowel or nasal. And all these three words, they have one slash one as the case. We have noted this. This indicates that they are interrelated. And what kind of interrelation is this? The answer is Saudhnya Saudhni Bhava. That one of them is a technical term and rest is the definition or the description of this technical term. And we know that it is that technical term whereas Ach and Anunasika define this technical term it. Anunasika which means nasal which is defined by 1.1.8 will give us now the following meaning. Anunasika is that sound that is produced from both oral as well as nasal cavity. Now after having known what Anunasika is and what Ach is, now we can define what is an it the first definition. The first definition is in the Upadesha that is initial enunciation this feature of the sound which is nasality is used for the metalinguistic function in the written as well as in oral text. However, this feature is not explicitly displayed in all the editions or in the manuscripts. However, the meta rules will clearly state which element is nasal. The meta rules come to our help. So now the meaning of 1.3.2 is the following. Upadeshe anunasikaha ach it saudhnya syat. Upadeshe anunasikaha ach it saudhnya syat. What it means is in the initial enunciation a nasal bubble is termed it. Once again this feature of nasality of a vowel is not explicitly displayed by any separate symbol in all the editions. Some editions try to give some symbol but that is not what is followed everywhere. In fact in most of the texts that we see this practice is not followed. So then how do we know? And even in the oral tradition, this practice is not followed. Then how do we know which element is nasal? So the Paninian grammatical tradition has observed which vowels are considered as nasal and accordingly they have noted them down in specific statements. These statements come to our rescue and then they tell us which element is to be termed as it which vowel is termed as it. So, a vowel is stated to be nasal by a given statement and then by applying this rule such a vowel is termed it. Let us take an example, a concrete example. This example is edha vridhau. This is taken from the Dhatu Patha, which is a list of verbal roots. What it means is Edha is the verbal root and Vridhav is the meaning in which it is used by the speakers in the object language. What this means is in the sense of increase the verbal root Edha is used. 
that is the general meaning of this line. If we look at either, we observe that there are two vowels, one at the beginning a and second a at the end after this the. So, there are three sounds involved here a, the and a. Amongst them a at the end of a the is termed to have nasal feature by the tradition. It is stated to have the nasal feature. So, this a is nasal here this a is nasal as per the statement in the tradition as per the statement in the dhatu patha. So, this a is now called anunasika and therefore, it is now termed it by 1.3.2 and then it is immediately deleted by 1.3.9. This vowel is now used as a marker to trigger certain operations like the subset of suffixes to be added after this verbal root that is what is triggered by this a uh, which is nasal. Let us take another example this is what we have already seen the five the, the two sutras out of the 14 sutras that we studied at the beginning they are Hayavarat and Land. Now, in this in these two sutras we have seen that 1, 3, 3 applies and T and N they become it. What is the use of 1.3.2 here? What we say is A at the end of the sixth sutra L, Lan and L in it. So, A at the end of L in Lan the sixth sutra is termed as nasal by the oral tradition of the Paninian grammar and therefore, it is termed as it and by A132 it is termed as, as it and is deleted immediately by 1.3.9. Now, by joining this nasal anunasika and hence it a uh, with the previous r consonant which appears in the fifth sutra over here, by the technique of making the pratyahara, the Paninian grammar derives the pratyahara r to describe operations with respect to the sounds r and l. These two consonants are part of the pratyahara r in which a as a vowel is marked as it because it is stated to possess the feature of nasality. So, this is the second example where a vowel is termed as it. So, what are our observations? In the list of verbal roots, the it is coupled with other feature namely accent and then the verbal root is called having a particular accent as it. For example, anudat and it. So, the verbal root is termed as anudatte, a verbal root having an anudat it. Anudatta is a kind of accent, we shall deal with this later on. In case of edha, it is termed as anudattet, whereby it means that the vowel a, which is anudatta and anunasika, is it. And now A1313 uses this feature and states that. Atmanepada suffixes are added after a verbal root which is anudatte. So, this is how this anunasika it will be used to trigger this kind of operation. To summarize, 
we studied one sutra 1.3.2 and now we say that this is the only sutra stating the term it to a vowel and this vowel essentially should be nasal and how do we determine whether it is a nasal or not this we determine by convention. So, the nasality is a conventional feature stated by actual statements in the Paninian grammar. So, this it vowel is actually not part of the oral as well as written transmission related to that vowel. The tradition has observed and noted down such nasal words. After having seen this sutra which terms the vowel as it, what next is the next question and the next point is the consonants which are termed as it and this is stated between this section 1.3.3 and 1.3.8. We shall study this next. Thank you.